citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 119, we're taking a look at all of the indie games hitting the Nintendo Switch through America's birthday, July 4th. After that, we'll check out some of the best eShop deals this week and help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. If you like our weekly indie rundowns, toss us a like and subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Twitter, come hang out with us on Discord, and stop by the YouTube channel on Thursday for our Nindies at Night stream. Now, you're probably expecting me to tell you about the neglected Nindies, where we look at games that released without warning since last week. And we'll get to that, but get this, there's technically only one. Isn't that weird? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Let's kick off episode 119 of Nindy Nation by taking a look at THE neglected Nindy that released since episode 118. If you watched the E3 Nintendo Direct, you caught a glimpse of the latest release by Team 17 and their long-running Worms franchise. And if you're like me, you also asked why it was in Nintendo's E3 Direct in the first place. This new entry, the first in five years, Worms Rumble, is quite a departure. It's a 2D arena shooter, so think Smash Brothers with guns and platforming. It looks pretty fun, and it includes cross-platform support for up to 32 players, and that should help foster a great online community since it released late last year on other consoles. It's available now for 15 bucks and has mostly seen middle-of-the-road reviews. Pocket Races also came out last week. <laughs> At first I was reminded of the classic Micro Machines games, but then I saw it's a Piotr Skolski joint. You know the game's bad when the B button apparently exits the game? and there's an always on-screen prompt for it. There's another free-to-play mobile board game on the Switch, and it's all thanks to Marionette and Prison Games. And is it just me, or does the name Anima Ludo sound like something... uh... sexual? Mo Novel is a new developer on the eShop who heard that if they put a bunch of skanky anime girls on the Switch, they'd be rolling in the dough. This catnip for perverts is called Love Kami Useless Goddess, <laughs> but the key here is that middle word. And that's it for the shortest list of neglected nindies yet. So let's jump straight in to the 17 new releases hitting the eShop through July 4th. The first Nindy of the week, and the only one to launch on June 28th, is a game whose audiovisual debauchery may leave a permanent scar on an otherwise appealing little action platformer. Here, allow me to share in my pain with you. Set to the tune of this... music? Mighty Aphid is a $5 Mega Man clone that looks about as you'd expect, and I gotta say I'm intrigued. The heinous soundtrack aside, there's also an alarming amount of screen shake in the trailer. You see this? It usually doesn't bother me, but the one-two punch with the soundtrack is pretty brutal. Assuming I can turn both of these down, I'll give it a shot and I'll let you know what I think later. On Tuesday the 29th, Badland Publishing brings us the next surreal title from the Spanish team Devilish Games. Anarik is a 3D puzzle platformer set within a dream, and if you told me that it was Tim Burton's dream, I wouldn't be surprised. You explore a seemingly interesting open world filled with puzzles and collectibles throughout, and with a launch discount at $13.49, Onirike sits at a unique intersection of unsettling art and 90s mascot platformers. If that lines up with your gaming tastes, give it a look! I don't usually cover the free-to-play games on Nindy Nation, but this week, console players can finally get their hands on a previously mobile-only title that I've had my eye on for years. Sky, Children of Light comes by way of the highly acclaimed developer, That Game Company, who you may know from their critical darlings Flow, Flower, and Journey. Now, Sky is just about as artsy-fartsy as artsy-fartsy can get, and even after watching multiple videos where Genova Chen and team explain exactly how the game works, I still don't really get it. Now, to be fair, the easiest way to explain Journey would be to say, You zoom around pretty environments and sometimes run into someone else. But that didn't stop it from sweeping Game of the Year awards in 2012. 
Sky takes a similar approach. You're exploring and flying around an open world, searching for things like candles that you can bring light to. You can play solo, but it's clearly meant to be a multiplayer experience. Also like Journey, you're matched up with characters in a way that you may not even realize are real people. You use simple expressions to communicate, and the entire point is to instill positive interactions. If it's anything like Journey, it probably works really well. There's matchmaking and support for up to eight players at a time, so as of right now, I'm thinking this could be fun to check out together during Nindies at Night. If you're interested in participating, join the Nindy Nation Discord and leave a comment below. Before getting to our Wednesday lineup, it's safe to assume these next three games will all slash the tires on your car, so steer clear at any cost. Snake It Till You Make It by Wix Games is basically Snake, but with local multiplayer. It's actually a great way to practice avoiding things like Hope's Farm, the latest Farmville clone by the team setting their sights on becoming the ultimate shovelware publisher. Game National! And it's $20. <laughs> now, I'm wondering if PixArts or Benjamin Kistler have started publishing under a new name, because Red, White, Yellow, a falling block puzzle game, releases under a new name, Takahiro Miyazawa, and it hits that level of awful that only groups like PixArts can. Either they're all different names for the same person, or maybe all these publishers are teaming up to create the Avengers of Shovelware. On Wednesday, June 30th, the eShop sees the release of Beloved Mind F*** oh. Doki Doki Literature Club. It brings a plus at the end of its name, alongside new content and an artwork overhaul by Team Salvato and Serenity Forge. I don't know what to tell you about this game. It positions itself as an anime schoolgirl visual novel, but it's actually quite a bit more, and features very mature themes with some wildly dark twists and turns as you navigate the various choices throughout the story. It's hard for me to recommend this game without spoiling it, and while I haven't played it myself, I've watched plenty of streams to get the gist. If you're interested in a branching path visual novel with some serious shock value, maybe consider it for $13.49. As a hint, if you saw my recent post about helping my daughter deal with a bully, Doki Doki Literature Club pulls no punches showing you just how far that can go. I think if there's any theme to this week's lineup, it's games that defy genre norms. And there's no better example of this than A Tale of Synapse The Chaos Theories, which releases for $17.99. The team at Suri Lab start with a gorgeous, surreal world that you puzzle platform your way through, but then they throw quite the unique wrench into the mix. See, the puzzles are based around mathematical logic, mostly algebra from what I can see. And while I don't think you need to be a math whiz to play the game, I have a feeling that you number crunchers are going to love this, and it supports co-op if you want to work through the puzzles with a friend. Tasura Games is publishing A Tale of Synapse, and they have a strong enough track record including Crease Tales, Baobab's Mausoleum, and even last week's Alex Kidd to give me confidence that if this beautiful, haunting, logic-based approach is in your wheelhouse, A Tale of Synapse should get the wishlist treatment at the very least. We get the weekly releases from Rattleika, which alternate between visual novels and retro throwbacks, and then we get the weekly releases from East Asia Soft, which alternate between retro throwback and, um, porn. But then every couple of weeks, we get a game where the two publishers work together to develop a smaller studio's retro throwback, and I'm not entirely sure why. I want an answer to that. This week, anyways, that game is Mina and Michi, which comes by way of Light Up for $4.99. It's a top-down adventure with equal parts simple combat and simple puzzle solving, where you control two characters at the same time. It looks cute, and it can be played solo or with a friend locally, and employs a colorful, friendly 8-bit art style. And again, with the games that laugh in the face of defined genres... Maybe that's because we're nearing Independence Day in the States, and these developers are claiming their independence from genres. Who knows? Sometimes you publishes Arcan, the dog adventurer, for five bucks, and it's... something. 
With a 2D view, you play as a dog who is playing a form of breakout, but on the vertical axis rather than the horizontal as you'd see in games like Arkanoid. Aforementioned dog, however, uses a bow staff to hit the ball into various enemies and blocks, and does so by teleporting around the screen. So it's like low-budget, side-scrolling creature in the well. Remember that game? I could go either way with this one, but I'm definitely going to leave you with this quote from the description. If you are a lover of platformer or arkanoid, if you love solid complexity and have stamina, this game is for you. If the last two points are not about you, the game also provides an easy mode. How about that for a game calling you a baby? The last game releasing in June comes to us from Daedlic Entertainment and Dane Crams. It's a point-and-click adventure called Anna's Quest, where half of the scenes look like awesome late 90s animation, and the other is straight-up nightmare fuel. It's loaded with dark humor, is written by a dude with a solid track record, apparently, and it releases on sale for $15.99. As we round the corner to July and officially kick off the second half of the year, make sure to not consider the following new releases. Dragon Question. <laughs> Get it? It might be an educational game about improving math skills, but there's just no way that this is a good experience on the Switch. Plus, they use the word edutainment, which might be right up there with synergy as one of the worst words ever conceived. I also feel kind of bad telling you to steer clear of No Gravity Games release this week, but come on, you're just playing hacky sack. <laughs> and speaking of awful words, the game is called Kickerino World. And then that new publisher, Adia, is back this week. They're here to take you on yet another trip to Anime Bone Town with Kira Kira something or other. Whatever, who cares. But then, my friends, we arrive at the Big Thursday Drop. And not only is it a Big Thursday dorp, a dr mm. <laughs> uh, I type dorp. <laughs> it's a Big Thursday dorp. Why do I record so late at night? Okay. So. It's a very small Thursday drop, but what makes it special is it happens to fall on my birthday. So let's see what the eShop has in store for old Uncle Nindy on his birthday. The Procession to Cavalry is a point-and-click adventure game set against the backdrop of Renaissance paintings. It's got a humorous, smartass tone, ridiculous scenarios, and comes to us by Joe Richardson and Digerati for 15 bucks. Looks like a fun change of pace if you're looking for something different in your point-and-click adventures. Not really for me, though, so what about... Discolored? Let's see. First-person puzzle adventure. Looks a lot like Mist. Takes place in a mysterious diner that has lost all of its color and looks very still and quiet. <sighs> Again, the premise is interesting. I'm getting some Kentucky Route Zero vibes here. And even though it's a short couple-hour adventure, for $10 by a solo developer, Godby Games, it looks like a good first showing. But this isn't what I want on my birthday. Okay, one more. Path Through the Forest. All right, what do you got, fun altar games? An exquisite and beautiful horizontal dissolving the riddle game. What is dissolving the riddle? Is that supposed to say dissolving? Maybe scrolling? Horizontal scrolling the riddle? No, that doesn't make sense. What the hell is this sentence supposed to be? <sighs> it's some kind of 2D puzzle game. What else do they say? There are two roads in a forest, and I chose the one with fewer people's traces, which has determined the paths of my life. What does that mean? Never mind. Some kind of puzzle game with riddles. It's six bucks. I think that is the saddest Big Thursday drop we've ever had. And it falls on my birthday. What's up with that? Oh, maybe we're getting an Indie World presentation that day. I'll hold out hope for that.
As Friday rolls around and in America we get ready to celebrate the independence of our country by blowing up a small part of it, there's a few more games to round out the week, and it kicks off with the exact opposite of a fireworks explosion with Mystic Ocean. Releasing on sale for 12 bucks by Paraloon and Nakana IO, Mystic Ocean seems to be a serene narrative exploration game set deep within the sea. You navigate deep conversations among the gods as they decide how to rebuild the ruined world, and your advice continuously alters how the world and characters around you develop. Pretty cool concept that is probably best explained firsthand. Fortunately, there's a demo available so you can see for yourself if life is much better down where it's wetter under the sea. A couple years back, Petite Games released Super Destronaut DX, and we got a chance to see what it would be like if Space Invaders was given a glow up. Unfortunately, while the game was exactly as advertised, I just didn't find much to enjoy beyond a single run that played exactly like Space Invaders. Well, they're taking another go at it as Rattleka publishes Super Destronaut DX2 this week for $4.99. It looks like there's some new enemies and weapons at play this time, which should help with the overall variety between levels, but as far as I'm concerned, this game is only a fit for someone who really wants to play every iteration of the classic Space Invaders formula there is. If that's you though, then this game should be right up your alley. In hashtag best day ever, you follow the lives of four people and help them decide how to spend their day the people they hang out with, when and how they work versus spend their free time, what they eat, and even how they engage in conversations. It's developed by Rerolled Studios, releases on sale for $13.49, and is the best way I can imagine what it would be like if anyone in my family ever listened to a Let's go thing I said. Oh, and then Ultimate Games teams up with Gaming Factory and Catastrophe Games this week, but before we go further, look at this logo. I get it, it's a cat, but does anyone else think it looks like a butt crack? Anyways, they release Food Truck Arena for $15.99, and it should be great if you like Rocket League, but wish it was built with a fraction of the budget and included a cast of characters made up of such shallow stereotypes that it looked like an early 90s comedy sketch. I'm saying it doesn't look good. Checkered Inc. delivers a little game this week that has me on the fence more than probably any other on today's episode, and that's Revolver & Co., which releases for $7.99. It's a simplistic side-scrolling adventure where the primary gameplay hook is answering trivia questions. As you answer the questions, you earn or lose ammo in your revolver and proceed across 100 levels in 7 worlds with over 2,000 questions. I think eventually you'd run out of unique challenges, but I'm also of the mind that for 8 bucks, you'd probably feel like you got your money's worth out of the game well before you reach that point. I'm also fairly confident that after researching this game for a bit, it seems to include procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! You know, I think I like this one. And finally this week in our long list of games that spit in the face of established, well-defined genres, we get an award-winning game that I have never heard of, and I think will be well-received by a good amount of you in the nation of Nindy. Epistory Typing Chronicles may have given it away, but the team at Fishing Cactus have made what has to be the freshest take yet on a typing game since Typing of the Dead. Epistory takes place in a striking papercraft world where you play as the muse, set out on a quest across blank pages and bring the stories to life. There's puzzles, narrative, combat, surprisingly high production value, and it is all played with an external keyboard that you plug into your Switch. This game looks awesome, and thankfully it has an adaptive difficulty too, so you can check it out if you don't necessarily consider yourself a skilled typist. I hope to check it out for myself, but I'm not sure if it'll be the best game to show on stream. Maybe we'll give it a shot this week on Nindies at Night. And if you want to play it for yourself, it wraps up the week when it launches on Friday for $11.99. What a wild week, with games like Epistory, Revolver, and A Tale of Synapse focusing on things like typing, trivia, and math. There's a lot of games that'll cook your noodle. And if you see yourself as more of a right-brained individual, there's experiences like Sky, Onirike, and Doki Doki. 
What do you think? Are any of these out-of-the-box titles making their way to your Switch this week? Let me know down in the comments. With the massive sale ending last week, we're getting a bit creative with the deals today. We've got three excellent titles that everyone should consider, and five games that are all about two bucks each. Math tells me that three plus five equals our picks for eight of the best Nindy deals available through at least July 4th. Right near the top of my list for games that flew under the radar so far this year, Shing is the full package. It's an innovative approach to the arcade beat-em-up where characters wield a variety of weapons that, alongside a totally unique control scheme, make the genre feel fresh and new again. However, if you want to just play it like a button-mashing brawler, you can turn that on in the options too. Shing looks and plays great, includes an interesting and funny story with voice-acted cutscenes, a replayable game structure, and co-op for up to four players. At 50% off, this is a great time to check out one of my favorite surprises of the year while it's $9.99. And then we get a game that I loved so much, it inspired me to start doing Let's Plays for the channel. 20XX is also currently half off, and it's a steal for $8.99. The premise here is simple. Take all of the things that you love about Mega Man X and throw it in a blender with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! What's not to love? And speaking of which, Round Guard is a title I feature on these lists almost every time it's on sale. You know why? Because every time I do, a bunch of you tell me how glad you are that you took a chance on it. Take Peggle, or Pachinko, I guess, or really just a simple ball-launching game? Give it a fresh coat of paint based on silly fantasy creatures, and just like 20XX, throw it all into a blender with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! And you've got yourself a delicious blend called Round Guard that is 56% off for $8.81. Moving into these simple, quick games, all of the following are right around two bucks. The Bug Butcher is awesome. The music, the visuals, it's all great. And the gameplay has you running side to side, shooting at enemies up above. It's great arcade fun, it supports two players, and is endlessly replayable. Check it out for a buck 99 while it's 75% off. Galaxy Champions TV is almost all of the same things, but as a top-down shooter that is straight-up IP infringement on the classic Smash TV. Either way, it's great and totally worth a buck 99. As a personal guilty pleasure of mine, I promise you that Gravekeeper is not a good game. It's a Diablo-like clone that strips everything interesting out and leaves you with a grindy, pointless combat system and a bunch of numbers that constantly go up as you work to kill the next biggest thing. And for about a week, I was obsessed with it. If you want to fall down this rabbit hole, I won't tell anyone. And since it's 80% off, I don't think anybody will notice either. Tawaga Among Shadows is a game that I did not shut up about last year, and actually, you can check it out for free on your phone. It's kind of a twin-stick shooter, but you're usually stationary, and it's more like defending a post versus running around a screen. I love it, it's awesome, I've covered it a bunch on Nindy Nation, and it's currently 85% off for $2.24. And finally, another game on that list of titles that just surprised and delighted me in the early weeks of this year, Binary Star Infinity is half off for $2.49. It's a classic side-scrolling space shooter, but it uses a striking one-bit art style that blends with fast, fun action and excellent music in a way that'll make it stand out in this crowded genre. If you don't like space shooters, this is a cheap one that's still worth trying. And if you do like space shooters, this is one you do not want to miss. It's a good time to spend a little bit of money on some games with a lot to offer. Tell me what you're checking out down in the comments.
If you want to support what we do here, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more indie game content. If you're feeling social, go follow Nindy Nation on Twitter and hang out with us on Discord. We're having Nindies at Night this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern, so be sure to stop by and check out a couple of this week's new releases with us right here on YouTube. And if you're interested in playing Sky with us, leave a comment below. Otherwise, that's it for this week, citizens. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you right back here next Tuesday for episode 120 of Nindy Nation. And until then, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 119. And remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.